Hey guys, uh, this is Dr. Mungli. So I have been uh, constantly asked by uh, students to explain um, uh, what all the energy sources uh, uh, for the brain and other tissues during fasting condition and starvation. Today I am going to explain uh, different energy sources for brain mainly and to the RBCs and also I will touch upon a little bit about uh, what all the different energy sources for uh, other organs during fasting condition and starvation. Before I begin to explain, let me just uh, give you what is, what, is, what all the timeline for fasting and starvation. Generally the fasting condition is taken 3 to 4 hours after meals and then it goes up to 24 hours. If someone is not taking any food other than water for 24 hours, that period we call it as fasting. And after that, after 24 hours, if someone continues to not to take food but accept water, so that we just call it as a starvation. So let me explain uh, the fasting and starvation energy sources for brain and other tissues by plotting a graph. So here is the y-axis which is indicating percentage of uh, fuel or percentage of your uh, biological processes that will be going on during fasting condition. So the duration of fast, so the duration of fasting here, duration. So pardon me for not uh, having a good handwriting here because I am using an app uh, which and uh, I'm using finger to write it so which is not uh, really coming up well so duration of fasting here duration of fasting so initially I'll write uh, 2 to 3 hours 2 to 3 hours it is initially it is uh, 2 I'll put it as 2 to 3 hours and then 12 hours 12 hours of fasting and then this part is one day one day and like that say two days three days so then I'll break it down and make it as one week so it means seven days one week from here it is one week all in weeks this is the second week third week and the fourth week so one two three and four all these are in weeks so initially I'll start with two to three hours of fasting so note that initial periods of fasting two to three hours of fasting up until 24 days uh, 24 hours that is one day so the first thing that will break down when we get into fasting condition is the glycogen so the glycogen breakdown will go on so the glycogen breakdown it starts at two, uh, at two to three hours of fasting it rises and it peaks by 12 hours and then it decline basically it depletes depletes by 24 hours this is what happens so glycogen degradation so here is this is uh, let me write it as glycogen degradation this is glycogen glycogen degradation so the glycogen degradation it starts at two to three hours of fasting it peaks at 12 hours as you can see here it corresponds to 12 hours here and means it means that your glycogen degradation is at peak going at peak level at 12 hours of fasting and it is completely depleted by 24 hours now if someone is fasting he continues to fast more than 12 hours and 24 hours what is the next energy source note that whenever we get into fasting condition there will be hormonal changes in our body and that is insulin level decreases and glucagon level increases so whenever there is increase in glucagon it is going to bring in the catabolic state in our body and basically we are going to break all the reserves that we have so the first reserve that is broken down by glucagon mediated action is the glycogen glycogen is broken down into glucose 1 phosphate by glycogen phosphorylase enzyme furthermore it is broken down by debranching enzyme and then that is taken care by glycogen phosphorylase now when the glycogen stores are going down so there is one more process which will start as the fasting goes and that is basically the gluconeogenesis so initially the gluconeogenesis will go on at a lower pace up to 12 hours and then it starts to pick up so at 12 hours it will going towards the peak and it will it'll reach peak by 24 hours and then it continues for next seven days so basically your gluconeogenesis 
it steams up at 12 hours all that starts at 2 to 3 hours of fasting but it's take its steam at 12 hours and it reaches peak by 24 hours as you can see here whenever the glycogen is completely depleted by that time you have gluconeogenesis which is taking care of glucose needs of your body okay so what is the substance that is used for gluconeogenesis so for the gluconeogenesis it is the protein that is used so the protein source of gluconeogenesis initially like from 2 to 3 hours of fasting then 12 hours of fasting 24 hours of fasting and then up like 7 days it is all protein amino acids are protein is proteolysis will go on whenever there is low glucagon uh, sorry low insulin and high glucagon because of this what happens the amino acids will be a substrate for gluconeogenesis so the process that is giving rise to glucose here is gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis so again uh, i'm sorry about uh, handwriting which is not really coming up well here so now what is the purpose of this gluconeogenesis so the gluconeogenesis the glucose that is coming out of gluconeogenesis is basically used by brain and your red blood cells because as you know that brain and red blood cells they will express glut1 transporters and glut3 transporters both the glut1 and glut3 transporters they have got low km for glucose means they have got higher affinity for glucose they readily take up the glucose that is coming out of liver by gluconeogenesis and also to remind you gluconeogenesis predominantly it will be going on in the liver to a certain extent it goes on in the kidney so what happens after 7 days to your gluconeogenesis so gluconeogenesis significantly falls down after 7 days uh, by 2 weeks it will be reaching to a certain level basically it doesn't really go, come down to the baseline by 1 to 2 weeks it just takes a continue uh, the constant phase will be going on at a lower level so now what is the substrate for gluconeogenesis at this stage basically the substrate for gluconeogenesis whenever it is falling down is the lactate lactate and glycerol lactate and glycerol is the substrate for gluconeogenesis at this stage so this continues as long as the person is fasting or as long as he is surviving or when uh, as long as the food sources are taken so now note that for gluconeogenesis for every two lactates that are converted to glucose every two glycerol converted to glucose or every amino acid two amino acids which are converted to glucose you need 6 atps for lactate for two lactate two one glucose 2 alanine to 1 glucose you need 6 atp same thing is not applied for glycerol there will be uh, different number of atps that are required for glycerol i think it is around 2 atps i guess i'm not sure on that so now what who is going to provide those atps to the liver for conducting gluconeogenesis so note that whenever we are getting into fasting condition so at 2 to 3 hours of fasting so where the glucagon is increased glucagon is going to activate an enzyme called hormone sensitive lipase this hormone sensitive lipase is going to cause lipolysis of triacylglycerol present in the adipose tissue so the fatty acids are brought to the liver and they will undergo oxidation so there will be constant amount of fatty acid oxidation going on in the liver and that fatty acid oxidation will produce acetyl coa acetyl coa gets into tca cycle and this is how the nadh plus h plus fadh2 are synthesized and they will get into electron transport chain and will provide atps and those atps will be used to make gluconeogenesis so whenever gluconeogenesis is going on in the liver so there will be a lipolysis going on in the adipose tissue so as the more and more fat is coming into the liver beta oxidation is going on acetyl coa is produced so tca cycle will get saturated whenever tca cycle is getting saturated the acetyl coa is are diverted towards ketone body formation so the blue line that you are seeing here is it basically it will show the rise of ketone bodies in our blood as and when the fasting and starvation will go on so whenever so as and when the gluconeogenesis is falling down as you can see your ketone body levels rises so these are the ketone bodies here which are coming from the fat that is the fat 
ఫ్యాట్ ఫ్యాట్ ఈజ్ ద ద ట్రయసల్ గ్లిసరాల్ జీ స్టోర్డ్ ఇన్ ది అడిపోస్ట్ టిష్యూ సో నోట్ దాట్ దెర్ ఈస్ అ కాన్స్టెంట్ రైజ్ ఆఫ్ కీటోన్ బాడీస్ ఫ్రమ్ టూ టు త్రీ అవర్స్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఫాస్టింగ్ సో వన్ డే దెన్ ద టూ డేస్ సో యాజ్ ద డేస్ ఇంక్రీజెస్ అండ్ వీక్స్ ఇంక్రీజెస్ కీటోన్ బాడీస్ బికమ్ ప్రిడామినెంట్ సో వాట్ యువర్ బ్రెయిన్ డస్ సో ద బ్రెయిన్ విల్ so after one so basically brain will start to use ketone bodies at 1 to 2 days or 3 days basically at this particular phase so your brain is going to use ketone bodies it will start using ketone bodies but it will adapt itself to completely depend be, become dependent on ketone bodies after 1 to 2 weeks so by that time your gluconeogenesis is already coming down so it means that brain is decreasing the use of glucose after one after one week so it is the only reason for this is brain is trying to save glucose for red blood cells okay so because it can now use ketone bodies red blood cells cannot use ketone bodies so whatever the glucose that is coming out of the glycerol and lactate gluconeogenesis it will be used by brain, uh, red blood cells whereas now the <coughs> ketone bodies are used by the brain now what about the other tissues what about the skeletal muscle what about other tissues what they will use during fasting condition during fasting condition your skeletal muscle initially for one weeks it is basically it will predominantly it will be uh, i think not really one week it is around like one uh, two or three days it is predominantly using fatty acids from two days to one week or two weeks basically it will use both fatty acids and the ketone bodies and later on say after 2 weeks whenever the brain is adapting itself to use purely ketone bodies so at that time even skeletal muscle decreases the consumption of ketone bodies and start using fatty acids overall your skeletal muscle will predominantly use fatty acids for energy needs similar to skeletal muscle even the cardiac tissue and other tissues will also use fatty acids coming from adipose tissue lipolysis for their energy needs so overall so during fasting condition and starvation so initially the glycogen is broken down and that will give rise to glucose glucose one phosphate so all these things are used by skeletal muscle and in the liver glucose one phosphate is converted to glucose six phosphate and then the glucose which is getting out of the liver and used by other tissues like brain and red blood cell so when the glycogen stores are depleted protein gluconeogenesis will go on by protein breakdown and the energy and that will go on for another 7 days at peak level and after that it just falls down to a certain range and during that time the atp needs for gluconeogenesis will be coming from lipolysis fatty acid oxidation so whenever tca cycle is saturated so acetyl coa is are diverted towards ketone body formation okay so this is all about the different energy sources for our brain and other tissues and rbcs during fasting condition and starvation so it is first is the glycogen which is a carbohydrate next is the protein which is conducting gluconeogenesis and the third is fat which is basically making ketone bodies in the liver so majority of these processes it will be going on in the liver okay that's all about it i hope you got it Thank you.